Welcome to Speak Out with Sandy Galef. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today I have such a very special guest with me, uh, a, a very special radio personality that so many as, of us have heard early in the morning and seen at different events. And I'm so glad that Casey is with us today. Casey Morabito, Grian, welcome. Thank you so much. I am delighted to be here. And Casey is on WHUD mm -hmm. um, early in the mornings. Yes. Uh, how early in the morning are you <clears throat> there at the radio station? The show airs from 5.30 till 10. The alarm goes off a little bit after 4. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, your whole life is so different than mine. Yes. <laughs> you really have to get to bed fairly early. As often as, as I can. Right, right. 7.30 sometimes? Oh, that's great. Uh-huh, right. Yeah. I right. need to be heading towards the bed before 8 o'clock most of the time. So that way I can stay up every now and then for something fun. Right. So I kind of read <coughs> an article um, written about you um, talking about what you do in the morning. And I, I think you're kind of quiet without a lot of noise around you when you wake <laughs> up. And you just have to kind of get into the day. Yes. Um, I think it, this really started when I was a kid. I remember my dad saying, don't talk to Casey in the morning. He'd put out the word. I just like quiet in the morning. It just, oh. I have to center myself. So were you always like that? I think I was, but <laughs> now even more so. I have to sort of gear myself up to first of all, wake up at that hour. And then I know I'm going to, I get, I guess I get pretty intense and I, <laughs> and I don't, no one can speak to me in the morning. That sounds so crazy, but my husband's asleep anyway. But um, like if he ever wakes up and he, like he kind of just waves because mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. start thinking already about the show and the right. show with, you know, Mike and Casey in the morning is just a series of, aside from offering up news, weather, sports, traffic, trivia, music, mm -hmm. of course, it's the rest of it is observation. You know, it's observation. Mm -hmm. What did I see yesterday? What are mm -hmm. people want to? going to want to talk about today, mm -hmm. what's going on in the world, and I start to inwardly focus. Right. Now, you do this with Mike Bennett. Yes. Um, and you've been the co-host for about 14 years 16, or so. 16, we're up 16 to 16 years. years that we've been doing the morning show together, Mike and right. Casey in the morning, but our history mm -hmm, goes back mm -hmm. to 1985. Oh, wow. When I went to Radio Terrace one day to ring the doorbell to sit in on Jerry Desmond's morning show. Now, Radio Terrace was in Peekskill at that point. Still is. The, there's, right. there's a street called Radio right. Terrace. Right. But yeah, the radio station WLNA, this AM sister station, and mm -hmm. WHUD, the big FM, 50,000 watts, they were both in one little building on Radio Terrace. And I had met Jerry Desmond. I actually waited on him. I was a waitress at Jeremiah's in Peekskill. Some people may remember that from back in the 80s, I guess, the late 80s. Um, and I was going to college for journalism and media, and I needed an internship. And the kitchen, in the kitchen was a dishwasher who was a high school football star, Jimmy McHale, uh -huh. who now heads up J.P. McHale Pest Management. Oh, okay. But he was the dishwasher at the time, big football player, and uh -huh. he saw Jerry Desmond at table one. And he said, do you know who that is? I said, yes, that's Jerry Burger, well done. Coke, no ice, lettuce and tomato on the side. Oh, because he always <laughs> so ordered I the same him, thing. Always. <laughs> he says, no, that's Jerry Desmond. He's on the radio. He does covers all the high school uh -huh. sports and the Con Ed winner of the week. And I said, really? Because, of course, Jimmy would right. know this being a high school football star. And I introduced myself. I said, I'm going to school for journalism and media, and I'd love to do an internship at the radio station. Mm -hmm. And he invited me up the next morning. So I had to ring the doorbell at Radio Terrace at 5.30 in the morning, and Mike Bennett answered the door. Oh, my goodness. He was wow. in the newsroom. Wow. So I got my internship, and I really got my whole career. I worked seven years with Jerry Desmond on WLNA before they moved me over to WHUD. Wow, that, that is great. I mean, it just, well, it's, it's an example of using all your contacts and networking, which yeah. you probably didn't even know you were using I at didn't. the time. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I was just, I don't, know where the, I don't know where that came from because I w didn't have the reputation of, like, being a go-getter. It, uh -huh. it just happened. It, it really just happened. was kismet. 
And um, and Jerry but does. To, but you have to take advantage of that. Yes. And even if you weren't the one to promote it, it's 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 a wonderful example of if somebody's trying to help you, just go in that go in that yes. direction. Yes. And what Jerry taught me was he opened the door for me. Well, actually, literally, <laughs> Mike Bennett opened the door for me because Jerry was busy at work when I showed up at the station. But what it taught me was, whenever any kid or adults says, you know, I'm interested in radio, I say. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm here, the door's open. Mm -hmm. Come up. Mm -hmm. You know, bring mm -hmm. your family. I'll give you a tour. I'll talk to everyone I know because that's how I'm here. Right. That's why so I'm here. So what, what do they allow an intern to do? Ooh, interns at the radio station, you know, we don't have as many as we used to. Mm -hmm. We really don't because it's different. You know, there was a time, especially on an AM station, you needed interns. Mm -hmm. I would do everything, mostly go to the copy machine, you know, answer the phone, mm -hmm, take mm -hmm. notes, call people mm -hmm. back. You know, I did everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I learned every aspect of the business in every department, help write commercials. <clears throat> but today, so many people, not only in radio but everywhere, one person does the job of three people, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everything, it's not like we have any need for any, especially with computers. That's and true. Like yes, that. everything is it's, faster. The contact is different. We don't right. have a lot of need for somebody to fetch us things or look things up for us because everything mm -hmm. is so immediate. So we don't have as many interns as we used to. We have few, they're few and far between, but if they get to the radio station, they get a good education. Right. So they'll do things like they'll file for me. They'll file birthdays for me. Or they'll mm -hmm. check that my files are right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have them sometimes just go through the newspapers and I'll say circle things that look interesting to you that you'd like to hear right. on the radio. So I have to tell you like a wonderful that. story. It happened with my daughter and uh, she was an intern for a very short time. Uh, at the radio station? At the radio station. Um, and she was assigned because she wanted to go into journalism and media yeah. work, which she ended up going into to law school, and she's in, in the courtroom. So wow. somewhat the same same thing. But she was assigned up to West Point. They needed somebody to go up to West Point and do a story on all the hair cutting, uh, because when you first get to West Crazy. Point, everybody's hair is cut. Um, and she was up there, but I got the phone call saying, I can't find West Point, Mom. <laughs> That was well before we had machinery. Did she ever make machinery. it? Uh, she did, and she had a wonderful story, and she really loved it. It was just for a short period of time that she was interning, but but it was really, really very special so for her. So they sent her to West Point with the microphone and the yes. tape recorder. Yes, they must have really been desperate for, you know, th sometimes there's so many news stories. Yes. It's hard to get people out. And, right. Uh, stringers. We used to have right. lots of stringers. stringers. And now the way the business is, we don't have a lot of stringers anymore. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. can send their story in an email. Right. But now I have to tell you my West Point story because okay. I had forgotten it. So I did my internship and I was working with Mike Bennett in the newsroom and it was a West Point graduation. And he right. said, uh, we're going to come and you're going to watch the graduation. He was like a gruff news guy. You're going to watch the graduation and mm -hmm. then, you know, when, they, when they're graduated and they throw their caps up in the air, I want you to record a one minute voicer to set the scene. I'm here at West Point and the graduation has just commenced or ended and, you know, I'm supposed to set the scene. And uh, the moment came and I'm all ready and they threw their caps up in the air and it was so beautiful, I just started to cry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I got no tape whatsoever. And it was a moment because I realized I am not cut out for the newsroom. <laughs> Put me on the music well, side. that's a learning, learning I'm experience. I'm not cut out for the newsroom. I just thought it's so beautiful. Look at the hats. Well, oh. so how far, I mean, the emotions, your emotions and, and, and your views on different things can sometimes collide on with the, prof with the professional side, yeah. I suppose. And um, so you're saying it happens less in the, in the type of position that you have now right. than it might have been out in the, in the news field. The only time it happened was uh, the day of the September 11th attacks. Oh, that was right, the only right. time my emotions mm -hmm. got in the way mm -hmm. and 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 I'll tell you it's it was cuz it stays with me Mike Bennett because he is an all-time newsman and he's my mm -hmm. partner mm -hmm. he has a lot of history in the news department he said right away like I think even before the second plane hit this is an act of terrorism and he said it on the air and I froze 
I was like, mm -hmm. you can't do that. You can't just say that. You can't, mm -hmm. CNN isn't saying it. How can mm -hmm. we say mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. And I literally froze, which you really can't do on a mm -hmm. talk two person mm -hmm. show. But he was absolutely right. His instincts mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. absolutely right on. And I remember in the days after that, there were times when I tried to speak and I would cry. Mm -hmm. But that was mm -hmm. the only time in all these years that emotions ever got involved because for the most part, when I am on the air, I'm not there as me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am very much me. I'm very much myself on the air, but I'm mm -hmm. not there for me. So I really put my emotions aside. And what I often say is, I'm still a waitress. I just serve mm -hmm. different things, but I am literally mm -hmm. there to serve. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. I am there to wait on you mm -hmm. or anyone else that's getting up in the morning, I take it very seriously. I bring my best self mm -hmm. to the game because that's what people getting up in the morning deserve, the very best me I can muster up. But I keep mm -hmm. my feelings completely to the side. Mm -hmm. And I've done it for so many years, it's gotten easy. Can, right. So in the morning when you wake up really early and you're getting ready to, to go to work, uh, do you know what you're going to be talking about that morning? Is it all planned or? We always know what we're going to do. You do. Okay. We always know what we're going to do. We have a road map and okay. we write it the day before because okay. we know at 6.15 we're going to give you tickets to Playland. Mm -hmm. At 7.15 we're going to talk about the latest concert at Bethel Woods. 6.45, you're going to get your horoscope. 7.45, you're going to get your birthday. News at the top and bottom of the hour. Traffic four times an hour. That's laid out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything else mm -hmm. wow. just happens. Just happens. And Mike and I don't speak in the morning. Mike Bennett and I right. don't speak in the morning. I'm in the studio already. He comes in and we don't do, good morning, how are you? How was your day? None of that. Mm -hmm, Everything mm -hmm. that happens, happens on the air. So it's more spontaneous. Oh, that absolutely. Way. Right. Otherwise, I, I suppose you could yeah. just, it's too organized. Yeah, you can too lose not spirited. the magic in the uh, rehearsal. Right. So right. we even know when Mike and I interview guests, mm -hmm. like they'll call in and they'll be on the phone most of the time and mm -hmm. we'll put them on hold and we don't chat with them before the interview mm -hmm. because we don't want them to start telling a story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we want to hear on the air right. because it never comes out the same the second time. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you get the honest reaction, you know, when you hear it fresh for the first time. Mm -hmm. So we'll to say, you know, whoever, um, we had Colin Hanks on the other day, uh, Tom Hanks' son is also an actor, oh, and he's, okay. in a, he's okay. writing and doing a bunch of different things. So it's, you know, hi, uh, Colin, how are you? Hold on. Mm -hmm. And then we don't go to him till we're ready for mm -hmm. him. And they can be from any place. I mean, anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. California. Right. They're getting up really right. early to be on our show. They're from uh -huh. anywhere, yeah. Right. All now, over. So is it one of you, either you or Mike, is the lead in that interview? Or it doesn't really matter? You go it, back and forth? It and... doesn't really matter. We go back and forth. And uh -huh. then if it's not, if we don't air it live, we're mm -hmm, taping mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And then it's in the editing. We just find out. Well, you know, my question was really stupid. Use your question. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. like the way he laughed when you said that. So it's just, you know, you make art when you have to edit. You right. Just, it's art. Right. So what are, what are some of the memorable um, interviews that you've had? Oh, my gosh, so many. Both, both good and maybe some that were difficult? Uh, the most difficult one was Simon Cowell in his heyday. American Idol was at its hottest, hottest, hottest. And he was right. really cutting and acerbic. Remember that Simon Cowell? Uh -huh, he's since yes. mellowed. He's a much nicer man. But at that time, he would be insulting and rude. And I didn't want to talk to him. Oh, so to you, he'd be insulting no, no, and no, rude to or his, anybody? To, to the singers on his oh, show. To, okay. And I was like, I don't want to talk to this man because mm -hmm. he scares me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the interview was live. And he's on the phone from California or London or wherever he was. And Mike and I are talking to him. And I'm really holding back. I'm really, like, hardly participating. And then towards the end of the interview, it's only five minutes, I felt a little more comfortable and I spoke up. And he says, oh, Casey, uh, nice of you to participate. You were a bit pathetic in the beginning. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, I just got insulted by Simon Cowell. Okay. Pretty cool. But he meant it lovingly. So that was one of the more awkward ones. Um, I remember talking to Julie Andrews and just... Um, uh, I just watched again, you know, the wonderful... Can you imagine? Sound of music, the sound yes, of music. Right, yeah. And to be able to thank her. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. I've thanked 
all of my heartthrobs and heroes. Right. You know, from Julianne Growing Hughes up, to, yes. you know, Bobby Sherman and Donny Osmond. We've had them all on the air, you know, in their right. 40s and 50s. Um, and oddly, one of the most memorable was um, Henry Winkler, the Fonz. He was so inspirational. Um, he's such an amazing man. And he said to me, I said to him, how have you managed to have such a long mm -hmm. career? I mean, he started out as Fonzie. Now he's still in movies and he's writing and he's writing children's books. And he said, Casey. And I said, the Fonz just said my name. You know, the oh, part yeah. of you inside. <laughs> he said, Casey, I live my life by two words, tenacity and gratitude. Uh -huh. Tenacity gets me where I want to go, and gratitude does not allow me to be angry along the way. Oh, now, very and that's good message. verbatim. Right. So you, you talk to people like that, and then you walk out of the studio and your feet don't hit the ground. You're like, wow, that right. was good that medicine. Was really good. So how long are these interviews usually? Are they uh, taped? They're um, 10 minutes, know? because these people on the other end are mm -hmm. on in a studio, and they are calling probably a dozen different stations. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. taped 10 minutes, or sometimes they're live 10 minutes, and that's it, because they're going to hang up and call the next station mm -hmm. and hang up and yeah, call the next station. Do you have station. to reach out to them, or is that through the, the whole media press communication? The whole media core? press communication bookers. You know, the people right. are always pitching us day after day after day, mm -hmm. not always for the super big stars, mm -hmm. um, but for, you know, a lot of people. Will you speak to this person? Will you speak to that person? Um, the comedian Rob Schneider, I just got pitched mm -hmm. for him today, and then um, it got canceled. And that happens a lot, too. Right. Now, are they having shows in an area? Or they have a movie coming out? With Rob Schneider? Does that Schneider? all relate? Yeah, great he late had a, um, a new Netflix series coming out. So they're promoting his Netflix. You know, right. t when there's TV shows, when the seasons are new, uh -huh. they'll let us talk to different TV stars to promote the TV shows. Right. Movies, concerts. Yeah. Right. So how about the elected officials? Oh, oh, my gosh, why do don't they we have you on more often? No, I just wondered what, what happens with... We used to have more, used to have more public but not as, affairs right. programs. We would dedicate on our AM station, WLNA, the mm -hmm. whole noon hour. Mm -hmm. Every day mm -hmm. was public affairs. Mm -hmm. And what has happened? I don't know. The industry changed. The newsroom... Maybe people that, weren't as interested. You know, yeah. don't you, I mean, you must do surveys no, to find out what's... I don't. I think people are interested. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also think now people get their news in so many different places. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think for the radio industry, a lot of radio stations had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be music intensive or is it going to be information intensive? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think for HUD, mm -hmm. they chose music intensive because we did do a survey once. Mm -hmm. And we were told, or the station was told, because really I'm just, you know, I just do what I'm told. Right. But the station was told, this was many years ago, you don't have enough information and news for the people who want information and news, and you don't have enough music for the people who just want music. So at that point, oh. we had to pick. Oh, right. Yeah. So you couldn't be perfect for no. all categories. In the right. radio station in my head that I'm uh -huh. going to own one day, that's going to be completely different. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. Oh. It's a dream. Okay. You know, I mean, I love what I'm doing right now. I'll probably do it forever, but I would love... But I'm going to tell you my dream. I'm going to tell Peekskill my dream. Okay. I would love to have a radio station frequency that um, could broadcast from the city of Peekskill, for the city of Peekskill, my home city. Uh -huh. And then I would have, that'd wouldn't that be great? That'd be great. And I would have an hour that would be just for Peekskill High School. Mm -hmm. let, the, mm -hmm. let the kids come in and play their music. Let them educate us as to what's going on in their world. Mm -hmm. I'd have an hour for the merchants. You know, let's mm -hmm. talk about what's going on there. And definitely for are political leaders. Right. That's great. That's my dream. Now, have you ever thought about television or no? You you really, do you have to make a decision whether you want to be a TV person or a radio person or can you do both? I what? think you can make a decision to, to pursue one or the other, but I didn't ever make a decision because I still haven't gotten over the fact that I'm on the radio. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this really happened to me. Uh huh. You know, right. looking back over my shoulder of 30 years, it's like, wow, I, I had a radio career. Who would have thunk it? You right, know? Right. So um, I would love to do TV. I'd love to have a talk show. I don't know. I'd love right. to do everything. But for the most part, I have to get up in the morning and go to work. And so go to work, right. I haven't yes. had time to really now, do carve people, out. When, when they meet you, yes. do the, is there a voice recognition? Because obviously they don't see you. Although, they actually do. I mean, there's some ads and papers right. and things with, with your photo in it. So much fun. 
the most fun ever. I was in the Mexican Shack jewelry store in Somers, and uh, this was many years ago, and I looked at a piece of jewelry and I said, as I tapped the glass, oh, that's so cool. And the woman uh -huh. laughed behind the counter. She says, oh my gosh, you sound just like that lady on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I am. <laughs> so that happens from time to time. Right. Or right. the other day online at Kohl's, um, I, was, I was confused about the coupon situation. And I was uh -huh. like, I don't know about this. And the woman behind me said, oh, don't worry, Casey. You know, if you just do this and this with your coupon. And I was like, excuse me? She says, oh, I saw you at the <laughs> WHUD Halloween party. I was the, you know, gory bride. I was like, oh. So I love that when people know me and I don't know them. But right. I grew up here in Peekskill mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from, with two huge Italian families, the Marabitos and the Bertolinis. I had dozens and, of uncles and aunts and cousins. I'm used to everyone knowing my name. You know what That's I mean? That's true. That's so it true. doesn't feel any different at all. Right, yeah. right. That's great. Well, you do go out and do a lot of events because yeah. I know you're the MC at a lot of dinners that I go to and so on. You're, you're always, you know, out and about with a, with a totally different group of people. Yes, and but I, I have to say, for the most part, I go to a lot of dinners, mm -hmm. you go to a lot more. You are everywhere. Oh, well, we both do dinners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really you well. you really show up. I mean, really, as a public uh -huh. official, I'm like one of your biggest fans because you really are there for the community. You're Thank everywhere you, all the time yeah. and you stay. Right. No, I really enjoy them. And, uh, but, but you're there doing the announcements, yes, letting everybody know, and awards and so on. And it does educate you. Now, do you take... I think you were one of the ones more recently was for the um, shelter down in Chop. Peekskill, CHOP. Now, after you go to something like that, does that work into any kind of programming or not, or it could or it couldn't? Do you, do you, you know, talk about homeless Absolutely. And training? And what The reason I, most of the time I get invited to go to dinners and MC dinners because they know mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about it on the air before mm -hmm. I go. Oh. And when I get back. Okay. And I never really thought about that. Yes. You're educating yes. me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not there because they think I'm cute. They're there because like, they're getting a free radio bit out of me. But if it's a good charity and if I uh -huh. think I can help. You know, a lot of people ask right. me to do things, but I, I can't find where I would be an asset. But if I can MC a dinner or pull prize mm -hmm. raffles or whatever, and I really think I can help bring attention to a cause, mm -hmm. I say yes. Mm -hmm. And since I've done so, I've fallen in love. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. with CHOP. Caring right. for the homeless of Peekskill and the good work they do, and so many other great works, and it becomes a part of my life. Right. So, right. you know, I support them all year long, not just on the day of the dinner. Right. So, do you do, I can't remember, do you do a lot of those raffles um, on the radio? No. Is it back in, I, I, I'm trying to remember, if you're, if you're pulling a raffle ticket, do yeah. you announce it always on a show beforehand that you're going to be someplace? Yes. And that you're going to be choosing those raffles. Yes. Like right. when we go out and do public appearances for the radio stations, mm -hmm. come and see us and register to win a prize. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then it gives people, maybe they'll come out and say hi and they'll register to win and maybe they'll tune in the next day to see if we pull their name. And then right. when I'm out at public service dinners, you know, for charities, whenever I pull a winner there, I always try to take as many notes as I can so I can come back to the radio station the next day and tell the story. Because I feel I'm representing the people who haven't met CHOP yet or right. Support Connection or wherever I may be. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to look here because somewhere I read in the paper, yes, this is it. Mm. All I ever needed to know, I learned on the radio. Mm. And that came from you. Um, yeah. is that, is that really, is that your life story? Yes. I, um, I have been traveling around for the last year. I can't believe it's a year mm -hmm. with a motivational presentation called all I need to know. I learned on the radio. Um, I do community theater for fun and the mm -hmm. people who book community theater, uh, it's called M and M theater productions. They were always asking me, can we book you as a speaker? And I'd say, no, I have nothing to, just because I'm on the radio doesn't mean I have any opinions. I have nothing to say. And then I got together with a group of girlfriends and we yeah. were going to have a women's symposium. Uh, Hudson Valley Hospital Center used to have a women's symposium each year. Now it's New York Presbyterian at Hudson Valley Hospital. And they don't do that anymore. And I miss it. I really miss mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem with sometimes bigger versus smaller yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we merge together. <laughs> so I was like, let's have our own women's symposium. So when we put Good it idea. together, they asked me if I would speak and tell the story of my journey. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, well, what journey? Uh, what journey? <laughs> and I sat down to write, and uh -huh. I wrote three hours worth of material. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I cut it down to an hour for the sake uh -huh. of this first women's luncheon that we had last January. And my sister was there. And my sister is the great barometer of my life. You know, she'll look at my outfit and say, oh, no. You know, <laughs> or, or she'll say, yeah, that was good. So she heard that speech, and she uh -huh. said, that was good. That was good. Uh -huh. You got to you got to take this out there. Right. And I was so I really value her opinion. So I called Eminem Theater Productions and I said, "Can I show this to you?" Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they said, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. So I pitched it to them, and they have been booking me everywhere uh, mm -hmm. for over a year now. And so it's the story of a girl who grew up wanting to know the rules of life, and I really did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know like, there's got to be rules, and I couldn't find any, so I kept making a lot of mistakes. Um, but you did you make up your own rules? No. I no, guess just... I don't know. I got in a lot of trouble just uh -huh. trying to figure out what the rules Those were. were. Okay. But now looking back, I see what radio taught me. And some of the rules mm -hmm. of radio, like the first rule of radio is smile. When you smile, wow. your voice is warmer. Oh, okay, because nobody's looking at you. Yeah. But, but your I voice can tell is you most everyone on the air is smiling. Uh-huh. That's a good rule for life. Rule right. number one right. is smile. Rule number two in radio is keep moving forward. You never back up and say, well, what we were just talking about 15 minutes ago. No, you reintroduce it. You keep right. moving forward. That's a good rule for life. Right. You always know where you're going. We plan it out. Where are we going next? That's a good rule uh -huh. for life. So I have this wonderful, I mean, I enjoy doing it. I don't know if it's wonderful to watch, but... Uh, it's an hour-long presentation, and there's musical clips, 30-second musical clips, like six of them in the show, uh -huh. that I ask the audience to sing along. So what do you do? Do you have a clip on Smile? Uh, no, yeah. I have a clip on, um, on, I don't have a clip on Smile, but I have a clip, I tell my story of growing up listening to the radio with my mom. My right. mom listened to the great DJs like Harry Harrison and... Um, uh -huh. Oh, that all started of, you Ron on all Lundy. this path. Right? Yes, and then my dad, he listened uh -huh. to WNEW 1130 uh -huh. in New York. Right. Do you remember right. that? I remember that. William B. Williams. Right. And he taught me to the, distinguish between uh, Sarah Vaughan and Ella Fitzgerald. Oh. So I have a musical clip about, uh, there's a Janis Joplin clip that my uh -huh. mom listened to, an Ella clip that my dad listened to. And uh, so the music helps tell the story. And that the is story great. is, the rules I learned on the radio the rules my guests on the radio have taught me, and then mm -hmm. the rules being having the lifestyle of a radio personality, which means sometimes mm -hmm. you're up at four, or sometimes mm -hmm. you're getting off the air at midnight, mm -hmm. and being alone, and alone mm -hmm. in nature often, mm -hmm. you know, driving mm -hmm. to work under the stars or as the sun comes up, what those, you know, set of lessons taught right. me. So that's well, what I've been Well, this is presented. wonderful. So as we close, if people want to contact you, Casey, oh. there's some information, I believe, that is uh, on our screen at yes. some point. Yes, caseyradio.com is my website, and mm -hmm. caseyradio at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody. Thank you so very much. You are so in inspirational, lots of motivation, and you do such a great job for all of us. So and thank so you. do you, well, thank Sandy you. Galef, do a good right. job well, for all of us. You're motivating everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, and I thank you very much for Casey coming. If you have any questions, please give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.